In this cap, we will first review some key terms and concepts that are related to phonics instruction, and then we will define the big ideas that you need to know about why phonics instruction is important. This cap is part one of two. Part one is focused on making sure you understand the stages of how children learn to read words automatically, and that you understand some of the most basic spelling patterns and rules that are often taught as part of decoding and phonics instruction. Before we dive into new information, let's review some essential background knowledge from previous caps. Automaticity is the name for the ability to recognize a word effortlessly and rapidly. Words that you can recognize automatically are also called sight words. Readers add more and more sight words to their vocabulary by basically reading more. This is developed through repeated practice both in isolation, like flashcards, and within texts, like decodable or leveled books. You should also recall that decoding is the ability to convert a word from print into speech. Being able to decode a word consists of two key phonics skills. The first one is blending the individual phonemes into a word. The second is segmenting or sounding out individual phonemes. Now let's set up the big ideas that you'll be learning about in the rest of this cap. First, the aim or goal of phonics instruction is to help students gain the decoding skills that will help them become fluent and proficient readers. Second, when students get instruction in phonics, they acquire decoding skills in a series of stages towards automatically recognizing words, and this series is sometimes called the road to reading words model. And third, there are some simple spelling rules and patterns that teachers frequently teach alongside those decoding skills in their phonics instruction. Before we go much further, let's define what we mean by phonics. Phonics is a teaching method that helps students relate spoken sounds to written symbols. Phonics instruction is generally intended for beginning readers in the primary grades, which is usually pre-K through second grade, and for older students who may be struggling to read. There are a number of evidence-based phonics programs that help teachers provide effective phonics instruction. A few of these that you may have seen or heard of are Orton Gillingham, LIPS, or the Linda Mood Phoneme Sequencing Program, Lexia Reading, or the Wilson Foundation's Reading Program. The Road to Reading Words is a model that is meant to illustrate the process of learning to decode words and then automatically recognize words. As you know from earlier caps in this series, learning to decode actually consists of a number of phonemic awareness skills, usually in a particular order, which is why we use a road with mileposts for this illustration. The earliest set of skills that most students gain on this road to reading is phonological awareness. And then there is the alphabetic principle, which you can think of as a key landmark, like a tree, on this road model. Developing the alphabetic principle leads to understanding that words are made up of phonemes. That understanding is called phonemic awareness. Once a child has a solid foundation in phonemic awareness, the key skills they need to learn in order to decode are blending and segmenting phonemes. Mastering those skills leads to being able to decode most words independently. As students learn more words, their vocabulary knowledge and automaticity both increase. When a student knows how to decode a word and knows its meaning and usage, then we would say that the student has automatic word recognition. But remember that it often takes multiple exposures to words before they become automatic, so students still need lots of practice at this point. This is our road to reading words. Now let's think about what teachers might teach in order to support decoding skills. What spelling patterns and rules might you need to know in order to do that? Here we will go over some of the basic rules and patterns by simply stating what the rules and patterns are. In primary or early elementary classrooms, you would very likely see these taught in a variety of more creative ways, but they're still essential to understanding and learning language and being able to decode and encode words. Let's start with the consonants. Most students learn the consonant phonemes first. The C rule and the G rule are essentially the same rule. Depending on what vowel follows it, the sound that the letter C or the letter G makes will be different. When C or G is followed by A, O, or U, it makes a hard C sound like K or a hard G sound like G. When C or G is followed by E, I, or Y, then it makes a soft C sound like S or a soft G sound like J. In a consonant blend or cluster, each consonant sound is pronounced distinctly as in BL as in the word black, FR as in the word freeze, or SPL as in the word splash. 
Two consonants together that make this kind of sound are called a consonant blend. Three or more consonants together that make this kind of sound are called a consonant cluster. So BL as in black would be a blend, SPL as in splash would be a cluster. In a consonant digraph or trigraph, you don't pronounce each consonant distinctly. Instead, these letters are pronounced as one speech sound, such as CH or CH, TH or TH, TCH, which also sounds like CH, or DGE, which makes a J sound. Two consonants together that make this kind of sound, like CH, CH, are called a consonant digraph. Three or more consonants together that make this kind of sound, like DGE, J, are called a consonant trigraph. Finally, for this group, there are the silent letter combinations. This is when two letters make one sound, but one of the letters is the dominant or only sound. For example, the sound that the WR combination makes is really just an R sound. Now let's look at the vowels. Vowel digraphs work very similarly to consonant digraphs in that they're made up of two letters that make one sound, just with vowels instead of consonants. Diphthongs are similar to digraphs in that they also just make one sound from two vowels, but their sound is called a glided sound. The sound that the letters OW make in the word bowl is a vowel digraph, but the sound that O and W make in the word down is glided. It's a diphthong. Lastly for the vowels group is R-controlled vowels. When a vowel comes before the letter R in a word, it's barely pronounced as a separate sound. Instead, the R sound dominates it. Last but not least, let's look at some common whole word spelling patterns. CVC is an abbreviation for the consonant vowel consonant spelling pattern. In a CVC word, a vowel appears in between two consonants within the same single syllable. The vowel sound in a CVC word is usually a short vowel sound, like a ah, as in sat. CV is an abbreviation for the consonant vowel spelling pattern. In a CV word, a vowel follows a consonant. This vowel is usually a long vowel, like u as in tu, or o as in go. The CVVC pattern represents a vowel digraph or diphthong in between two consonants, such as the word beam or the word toad. Finally for this group is the silent E pattern. When there are two vowels in a word, but one of them is the E at the end of the word, then the first vowel is usually a long vowel sound, and the E at the end of the word is silent, such as the word cape. Now let's review all the new information that we covered in this cap. We began with identifying these three big ideas about using phonics instruction to develop students' decoding and automaticity skills. We defined phonics as a teaching method that helps students relate spoken sounds to written symbols. We looked at the sequence of how students use decoding skills to eventually recognize words automatically in a model called the Road to Reading Words. And finally, we went over some common patterns and rules that you would need to know in order to implement high-quality phonics instruction and that would be reliable cues and clues for students as they learn to decode unfamiliar words. That's all for part one on phonics instruction. Now move on to part two. Thanks for watching.